guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the second video in a little set of videos we're doing on how to process a simple static GNSS network in Trimble Business Center. So if you remember in the last video, uh, we imported our data and processed all our baselines, and uh, we're ready to uh, run our minimally constrained network adjustment. And to do that, we need to add, first thing we need to do is add a control coordinate. And so I wanna try and do that with a core station. So what I wanted to show, I wanna show you how to do that here. So if you just open your web browser, you can do a Google search for NGS cores map, and that'll uh, pull up, hit this top link here at the, at the NGS site. And that'll pull you up a map of the course. And we're going to zoom into my part of California here. Now, unfortunately, none of the PBO stations I added are cores. Uh, some of them are, but none of the ones I added are. But I notice over here, P176 is a cores. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, go to Get Site Info. And then over here, we're going to come to Coordinates, that link, Coordinates link. And what we want is the data sheet for the position at the antenna reference point. So we'll click that, and that's just going to pull up a standard NGS data sheet. Okay, so here's the data sheet, and what I want to do now is I want to save this. So we're, we're going to go ahead and save it to our job folder. So we'll open that up. So in the network project folder, under data sheets, We'll save this, and I'm just going to rename it, uh, except I can't remember the name now. It's uh, P176. Okay, so we'll save that. Okay, and what we really want out of here is this coordinate value. So I'm actually going to pull up Notepad so we can cut and paste. <coughs> Excuse me. Still allergy season here in Central California, so I'm sniffling and coughing a little bit. But all right, so right here we've got the uh, northing and easting in the uh, data sheet here for this point. So I'll add those, and we want to get rid of those commas. Now the elevations are a little trickier, so let's just scroll up. You can see that uh, they don't give us an elevation here. What they do give us is an ellipsoid height. Okay. And uh, they give us an ellipsoid height and a geoid height. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. So our ellipsoid height is 434, excuse me, 4, yeah, 434 dot 3.47 meters. And our geoid height is minus 32.590 meters. Okay, and the very first thing I want to do is get rid of those metric values because I hate metric so with a passion. So we're going to come over here and we're just going to convert those to metric real quick. So we've got 142502 for the ellipsoid height. And we've got... Minus 10692 for the geoid height. Okay. So we're going to use these values to uh, do our minimally constrained network adjustment. And I've already saved the data sheet. So I'm going to just close those tabs. We don't need them anymore. Now, we do need to add P176 to our network, which is why I leave this page open. So you'll remember this page from the last video. So we're going to go up and we're going to grab P176. And we're going to save those files in our import GNSS PBO folder. Okay. And then we're going to import those into our project. So let me go open that project. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to drag those files for P176 into the project. And go ahead and import those. I'll give it a minute here to load. All right, so there's P176. Now you'll notice I'm getting quite a ways from this station, so some of these baselines to these local points may not process from P176, and that's okay. So let's go ahead and select these new baselines and process them. All right, so the baselines are processed, and I paused the video so it won't be that fast in real life, <laughs> but they're processed. And I'm actually surprised. Um, it looks like we got good results on all, all our baselines. This one's pushing it a little bit. I'm up at 1400 here on the vertical, but I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll go ahead and save it. We'll see how things work out in our network adjustment. All right, so now really what we should do at this point is rerun our loop closure because we added that other data and just we just want to check this average loop in. Okay, and I still have good values. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and uh, print that. And we'll save over that report. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. All right, so now we want to go ahead and do our minimally constrained network adjustment. So we're going to select this point P176. Uh, that's what we're going to hold in the adjustment. I, I call it the seed point. Uh, you might hear different people call it different things. And uh, what we want to do is we want to add a control quality coordinate to this. So it's this button right here, add coordinate in the properties dialog. Okay, and I can see as soon as I go to do that, I've got these weird northern easting values. And that's because I'm a dummy and I haven't set my project coordinate system yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to right click in the project explorer, go to project settings, coordinate system. This is just set to WGS84 right now. I'm going to change that. I'm going to say, hey, I need to be in zone three. Geoid 12B. Finish. Okay. All right. Now, when we go back in to add that coordinate, control coordinate, we should see some state plane values. Now, here's a good check. As a general rule, these values are going to be within five feet of the northing and easting of what you're pulling off the data sheet as a general rule, at least in the in the part of California that I'm working in. So let's go ahead and see how close we are. So we've got 59379, 596, so we're pretty close there. Okay, so I'm going to just paste that in there. And we've got 5920, 6207, so we're, pretty, we're within four feet there. Take that. All right. Now we need to do a little math to calculate our elevation, and that's generally going to be more than a few feet. That can be 10, 10 feet. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our calculator up. Sometimes I got to do this a couple times just because I'm a dork and I don't remember how exactly you add these. So I think what we want to do is we want to take 142502 and we actually want to add that 106 because it's a minus so it's a minus a minus so we're going to add 106.92 okay that gets us to 1531.94 so yeah we're within three or four feet so that looks like a good value to me okay so we just essentially back calc the NAVD88 height based on the ellipsoid height and geoid height on the data sheet Okay, then we're going to set these to control quality. That's important. You need to do that or it won't show up in your network adjustment. And we're going to say OK to add that coordinate. Now, you notice as soon as I do that, this symbol changes shape. So that tells me that is now a control quality coordinate. So we're ready to run our minimally constrained network adjustment. So we're going to go to the survey tab and we'll pull up adjust network. It opens this dialog here. I'm going to go ahead and hold the 2D position and the elevation of this control point. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and run the adjustment. Now it tells me right away that I that I, I passed my T-square test. So what that means is based on the error settings, did it, did it find the errors? Were the actual errors pretty close to what we predicted? And the answer is yes. Okay, this reference factor, if this number is below 1, that means... You're, you predicted larger errors than it found. If it's over one, it means you predicted smaller errors than it found. Now this is a little bit over one, which is okay. Our network still passed, but I always like to, to keep it under one, just a little under one. So I'm gonna come over here. If you hit this button, it's a shortcut to your project settings under GNSS. And I'm gonna say, yeah, I probably had a little more sing, centering error and height error than a hundredth. I'm gonna say a hundredth and a half. Now it's ignoring these values up top, 
it's only using these values down below because in the default standard errors, I'm telling it, take the, the uh, errors for the baselines from the uh, processing statistics, okay, which is what I do by default. So I don't change that and use those other error settings unless I can't get the network to pass with the, with the default. Okay, now we're going to rerun our adjustment, and you can see that drop down below zero. Uh, but I failed, so, so now I made my errors too big. <laughs> so this is kind of a trial and error thing. And we're not really changing these values that much, guys. The actual coordinate values, we're not really moving around. Um, so we'll, we'll try uh, 12 thousandths on each of those. All right, that's a good number there, 97. Looks good. The other thing you can check is you want to see nice round circles here on your error ellipses, which we have. So I feel like we have some pretty good data. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull open the network adjustment report. And I'm going to go ahead and just quick check of this, make sure the settings are what I thought and they are. And uh, this looks good. It gives us our adjusted coordinates. Uh, so we, we're just going to print this. And it's going to go in that same folder. And we're going to call this uh, Minimally Constrained Network Adjustment Report. Okay. So we'll close that. I want to go ahead and end this video because I'm, I'm almost at 12 minutes. I will let you know that there are folks that will go in now and do a fully constrained network adjustment. So they would hold some more stations and, and do another adjustment. I don't typically do that. I don't think it's necessary most of the time. Um, when you do that, you're just, you're just pushing the air around in these outside stations. You're just pushing that air around on the inside, and I don't like to do that. I think I've got pretty good values here. But I will show you. We'll do one more video, and I'll show you how I check... Um, I checked the quality of this adjustment, and I actually used the method that's spelled out in the FGDC standards. I've got a little spreadsheet set up to do that. Um, so I'll show you guys how to do that in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.